I have to highlight coherent again. You probably will hear about coherent from uh, many other um, OFC representatives, and we continue to keep it as our hot topic, and we expect that our audience will come to listen to all the current developments in this area. Uh, for me personally, I expect to hear more what <coughs> coherent technologies will bring to the next generation of optical networks and developments in OEDM uh, technologies and connectivity. Coherent is sort of blurred, I think, all across the categories. You hear about transmission in the research sessions. You hear about uh, components and etc. in uh, other sessions. And then uh, NFOSC has a few papers on deployments and field trials, which I find also very interesting. So it's sort of uh, it's a topic that is cross-sectional across the conference and is covered by most of the subcommittees uh, with this or that flavor. There's some really hot topics. There's a huge problem right now envisioned with the capacity crunch that we're starting as our group bandwidth is growing exponentially still. Capacity is growing at 2 dB per year. And the, uh, we're running out of bandwidth. And there's tricks that we're playing right now to, to get that bandwidth. There are still people, but people started to look at the limits. They're looking at the analog of the Shannon limit. And there'll be talks on the Shannon limit, or its analog in optics. And there's some debate as to exactly what it is and different ways of getting at it, how close we are to it. Another hot topic is, uh, for me, is quantum communications. That we're going to have a special symposium on that. And the uh, co it's, it's, it's quantum communication has been a, is sort of been a scientific curiosity for a while. People now are starting to build, start to think about what do we need to put it in the network? And the previous systems have not been, or say 10 years ago, systems were not anywhere near network compatible. Now people are making systems that are automatically, they automatically controlled. There are feedback loops that take away the need for 14 people to, want to monitor the thing and adjust it prior to use. We didn't actually go for a low, for a low power topic. That was, that's, a, that's a Vixel paper. From, so we haven't actually looked at having a session on low power consumption devices but that is also a topic that runs through all the all of the sessions there isn't actually one specific session on having a low power but you can see it running through uh, the devices that people are looking at trying to lower the power because people recognize it as a there's a green card and also you, you will find a lot of people that fund research are very interested in funded research that's green orientated both in America and in Europe really? and trying to be able to develop Low cost and low power consumption components is very important. So low cost will reduce the cost of actually building your network, and low power consumption reduces the cost of actually running the network over a long period of time. So lowering or developing devices which are both low power consumption and low cost enables you to reduce both your capex and your opex. So it's very interesting for telecom providers. For me, one of the, the hot topics at OFC and FOEC this year is, uh, is 100 gigabit and beyond Ethernet. And I, I think that is interesting because before the bubble burst, there was a lot of uh, established companies and newer companies that were getting things in place to deliver 40 gigabit per second sonnet type rates. When the bubble burst, a lot of that work went away. Uh, there was a, an opinion that there was a lot of overcapacity, and so people went back to 2.5 gigabit per second, 10 gigabit per second type infrastructure. Um, in the last 10 years, there's still been a lot of research. What we're seeing is that while 40 gigabit per second is starting to come out, 100 gigabit Ethernet is really becoming a reality, and so 40 gigabit may be leapfrogged.